So uh, for the last uh, 15 months that I have been in uh, Niti, uh, one of the most important things I have been looking at from my macro perspective and the areas under my uh, kind of direction are skilling and women's participation in the labor force and the connections between these two. So it is a macro perspective which looks at these issues in terms of economic growth, and development and uh, and the future so uh, 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 there are a number of things which are uh, important uh, let me start with uh, labor force participation rate so what the data shows us is that uh, there was a peak uh, around 15 years ago and then the labor force participation rate of women went down drastically but now in the last 10 years or so, it has recovered to almost the old peak. But that is not enough. So when we look into the future, there is still a gap between male labor force participation and female labor force participation. So the next uh, issue before me was to find out what is the problem. So again, we look into the research and we find that uh, there is a, a difference between educated unmarried women and all married women now this is interesting because it tells you what we need to do so in uneducated in uh, highly educated married uh, unmarried women which includes you young people divorced uh, never married unmarried means that so the gap in that higher educated unmarried category is almost gone okay this is an interesting development over the last 10 years. So what that means is if we want to work further, we have to focus on the issues uh, connected with married women. Now, uh, I'll tell you a few interesting research facts and th these are things we are still working on. We have not got all the problems and obviously uh, I'm looking at a macro view. We will have to discuss with uh, uh, ministries, etc. But there are two or three very interesting research findings which are relevant to this. So one is, you find that the surveys show uh, something called a 20-minute rule. So it turns out uh, that, uh, for example, a woman in a rural area, if she's going to work, there's a distribution that most uh, women do not want to go more than 20 minutes. Okay. So there's a 20-minute there's a rule, which means it's in terms of time and distance from the uh, thing. So one of the things which one has to focus on and think about is the transport. You know, what are the transport systems? Uh, what are the available opportunities within 20 minutes range and so on? The second element, which is very clear, which most people know, but again, for me, the overall picture is very important. And that is that married women have uh, child responsibilities and age it. They, they take an uh, excess burden. So what one is thinking of, uh, uh, when we think of potential solutions, we are thinking that we must uh, do something about, for example, crashes, you know, so to make the burden easier, so that if there is a, a facility for uh, 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 taking your children there, that will tend to remove this or reduce the constraint. And uh, as a market person, I also think wider. I say, okay, is there a market for childcare? and so on so so that is another whole set of issues one has to, to see what are the policy can one give incentives to private industry etc etc so like that we look into it we think of policies uh, and try to facilitate now a second point which is related to this which uh, is kind of new is that we are placing a large emphasis on manufacturing you have all heard of supply chains we are trying to get supply chains from uh, other countries to shift to india or get new supply chains and what we know is in southeast asia uh, women uh, were an important part of the industrial workforce for certain types of industries like textiles electronics uh, data processing uh, and so on so that is a huge new opportunity uh, which is coming as the supply chains shift to India, we must make sure that uh, that this opportunity we know has happened in Southeast Asia also happens in India. And fortunately, we already have one or two examples 
of companies who are tra- tra- producing mobiles etc they are making special efforts to to involve <coughs> women so one example for example is that <coughs> is uh, that uh, 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 there there are two types of things which are happening and which we should promote so one is that the company which wants a large labor force let's say 10000 workers they are organizing transport in villages so they'll take a cluster of villages 10 20 whatever is convenient from the factory and bus in the female workers you know so make a special effort for transport remember what i said about transport and 20 minute road so they are doing this the second is providing housing so uh, uh, especially for younger women uh, which i said earlier the unmarried Uh, the, the, this is a big opportunity because they can also go for a certain period so if housing is provided within the factory per- premises so for example and therefore policies must make sure this can happen that that's the point to understand it what are the possible solution and what uh, policies can do about it okay so that is a one whole set of issues the small uh, the second part which is very important is skilling now skilling for women we can think of traditional occupations which are generally uh, a lot of women in it certain types of personal services education health uh, nurses etc right so one is upskilling in those and what i am looking at is that you know we always think only of nurses or, or just a school teacher but it is people are finding uh, ngos are finding there are many many different levels below it just to give some example one ngo has found that they can they have 11 levels of skilling below the school level so teachers can are not just school teachers they can teach in different ways in case of health there are all kinds of specialists it's not specialists like medium skills what i call uh, like uh, physical therapists mental therapists so traditional occupations uh, uh, upskilling Uh, connecting markets creating the skills in traditional and then of course the non traditional ones which are more often discussed that is also there uh, so if there are barriers to entry in financial sector in management etc lot of discussion has taken place so so uh, uh, that is the broad uh, picture of uh, female employment i see it as an opportunity i say uh, it's a weakness which we have but we can convert it into an opportunity because the gap is larger so if you are here you can go all the way up here and you'll get a big boost in economic output in income and everything so that that is the uh, the macro part now if you want me to speak something about uh, personal now uh, and uh, i'll have to be brief here because we got only a bit of time uh, but what i i was uh, asked is that you know uh, Uh, let let me start uh, with the fact that uh, from day one my wife who's a, a professional has always worked so the issue comes why is that is, is there something which you can learn uh, you know why is it that somebody like me i mean i am no saint or anything was uh, accepting of that and and uh, so so for that i'm going to give you a little bit of higher level uh, stuff which you may not hear from others so so i i would think the the, the basic uh, point is that uh, in our culture uh, and philosophy uh, we have different levels you know uh, some people will look at the veda the uh, upanishads etc and see the detailed social thing which are negative in some sense okay uh, uh, but uh, uh, that is what they fail to see is that was a conditions or society was organized like 5000 years ago that doesn't mean we should organize it like that and how do we get out of it we have to move to a higher level you know one of the unique things about indian spiritual philosophy is there are many layers and uh, the way it is set up is that it is up to you you know i may want to go four layers deep or four layers higher somebody may just go one layer below the surface but it's up to us but i think it's very important to understand that if you get into the higher or deeper layers there is a whole bunch of uh, uh, free thinking you know and so so the lesson i have learned from it is that people who are constrained by only being on this surface layer are in some sense very negative they interpret things in very traditional ways which may have been very relevant 
you know 5000 years ago or maybe even 3000 years ago they came back or 1000 but that is no longer we are in the 21st century and and one of the things uh, i i would advise people to serve is as uh, search is w- what i learned in my family we never had any mention of uh, uh, caste or gender discrimination or anything because uh, my parents were uh, at you know had investigated those deeper layers there is no discrimination there you know there may be discrimination on the surface uh, but if you go below the surface you can kind of liberate yourself so th- that that's one uh, basic point that it's useful for people to learn a little bit of this deeper uh, spiritual philosophy because that is non discriminatory there's only second lesson and i'll end that with that is that uh, uh, with this uh, background uh, th- there is a, a thing because Uh, the issue is how you treat uh, people and and life so uh, uh, you know again we have a culture of family so what does it mean that means each person has to support the other and support the weaknesses so one of the reasons i believe for my success for our family success is that we've done Uh, you know you cover each other's deficiencies right so if i am incapable of doing housework we do something else we find a person and i i would say that's the second part i already talked about child care in a academic sense or a, a policy sense but i think uh, that's that in a way was critical and we were lucky that we found uh, and she found us uh, a widow uh, you know and who stayed with us she is a housekeeper who has been with us for 40 years uh, and she is like part of the extended family but i'm just giving that as one solution other people and will have to find their own solution i think that is important if both uh, the husband and wife are professionals this child care element becomes very important